we can begin. So this is the opening of the regularly scheduled um, Conservation Commission meeting for the town of Norton on Monday, October 28th, 2024. It is now 6.30 p.m. Um, and as is required, because this is a remote meeting, we will be reading a preamble. Uh, and so, Dan, you're on. Pursuant to Governor Healy's March 29th, 2023 bill extending several COVID era policies and programs by allowing virtual meetings to continue from March 31st, 2023 to March 31st, 2025, this meeting of the Norton Conservation Commission will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties to the right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found at the end of this agenda. Members of the public attending this public hearing slash meeting virtually will be allowed to make comments if they wish to do so during the portion of the hearing designated for public comment excuse me, by raising their hand virtually or pressing star nine if participating by phone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post on the Norton Cable website www.nortonmediacenter.org, an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Thank you, Dan. Uh, so participating in tonight's meeting uh, uh, is, well, are uh, myself as chairperson, Beth Chui and Kadish, we have uh, Lisa Carosa as uh, vice chair, and uh, Paxton Halshell, Mark Fernandez, Tama Best, um, Dan Pearson, uh, as the other members of the commission participating. We have our director, John Thomas, and our assistant, um, Megan Harrop, also participating, and uh, Joe Carvalho, uh, last commission member is unable to attend tonight. So a first item on the agenda is um, conservation uh, of, uh, I guess, uh, project continuation requests. And the first one on the agenda, the only one on the agenda is 257-259 um, Mansfield Avenue. Um, having to do with the uh, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers site. Um, they are requesting a continuation until November 25th. Do we have a motion for that? I'll make a motion. So moved. Uh, so let's see. I think Lisa got in by a hair as the motion and Dan by the second. So roll call vote, beginning with Mark and Paxton. Aye. Aye. Lisa and Tama. Aye. Aye. And Dan. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. The motion carries. Uh, next up is, uh, well, are we going to go ahead with the review draft minutes, or are we going to do that later? I think we can do that later this evening. All right, so next up will be uh, the next continued public hearing, which is uh, file number 250-1163, 400 Arnold Palmer, um, what is that, Boulevard or whatever it is, away perhaps. Um, and uh, Sarah, would you be the uh, representative of the applicant? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, Dan Wozlowski and Kyle Elliott are here as well um, from the club. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, just as the chair said, Sarah Stearns from Beals and Thomas. 
Um, this is a continued discussion from our last hearing for proposed uh, improvements to a couple of areas on the club grounds, some renovations proposed within jurisdictional areas. Um, if you recall at our last discussion, there were a few things that were requested um, by members of the commission. Um, since we last talked, we have provided some revised plans um, and a supplemental information letter with a few attachments, hoping to address the comments and questions that we discussed at our last hearing. Um, I'm happy to share my screen and walk through the plans if that's helpful. I'm not sure who has had a chance to read through the materials yet, but I'm happy to go into more detail if the commission would like. Uh, I think if you can do a quick once over on, on the plans, if you're able to do that. Sure. Everyone see my screen? Uh, we can. Okay, so uh, not a huge amount of change from the originally submitted plan set, but again, just to remind everyone of the overview of the property, there are three areas that were kind of the focus of this NOI, um, what we're referring to as the whole 10 improvements, the whole two improvements, and then we included the work proposed um, around a portion of the seventh hole, though work has been um, kept out of the 100 foot buffer zone. We included it just to give the commission a comprehensive view of what will be going on um, should an order be issued. Um, so just kind of scrolling to the more detailed plans. This is the second hole where um, is the Kind of the lion's share of the work in jurisdictional areas anyway. Um, if you can expand that just a little, it might be yeah. helpful. There we go. Yeah. I'd like to start with the overview and, and kind of zoom in. But um, the commission had requested a few more details on this one in particular. You can see how the whole sort of curves around this human-made pond. Um, the club would like to take this opportunity to really just straighten it out. And um, we collaborated with the club's golf course architect to include some of the grading that they're proposing here, some of which was, is in the 100 foot buffer zone um, to surrounding wetlands. So more grading has been added just to kind of give the commission a sense of the um, earthwork that's proposed. You can see that a cart path is being removed and replaced um, further down. Um, this is the also the area where a um, footbridge is proposed through the BBW adjacent and replication is proposed where the current second green is today, really kind of expanding on this um, pond and marsh area. Um, so that's kind of the brief reminder or overview of this uh, work proposed at this hole. Like I said, this is kind of the larger component. Um, this is the work on the seventh hole that I mentioned that's really outside of jurisdictional areas, but we included it just to be comprehensive. Again, it's just sort of realigning the existing hole um, in the upland areas. And then this is the work proposed on a portion of the tent hole, uh, which was at the top of the page on the overview sheet. Um, and you can see that there is some work proposed within the 100 foot buffer zone, again, largely um, in keeping with the layout, but ex expanding the whole of it. Um, and the club has kept work outside of the commission's 25 foot um, setback. I know that the commission instills a policy for that. So we have kept work um, 25 feet away. And again, this is a um, pond that's in existence. I did also bring um, a few photographs of the second pond in particular, which I thought might be helpful to see. Just close that and open this one. Is the second pond also human made or is it a natural pond? Um, I think we decided that it was, ex it was a naturally occurring pond that was expanded over time. And I think that was done as part of the gravel operation before the club, the golf course was built. <clears throat> So it's kind of a combination of both, I believe, um, kind of going back in history on number 10. 
Um, but this is a picture, I think I took this last fall, um, of the, a portion of the ponded area on the second hole where the green sort of wraps around. Um, and I just wanted to share with the commission that it's a pretty interesting feature because it's inundated uh, um, in the spring, but throughout the summer and the fall, we see the water recede a little bit and there's a really interesting um, marsh habitat that has um, evolved in this area. And that's really the goal of what the club is trying to do to expand that. And you can see here, this is that second green that um, was built that sort of wraps around the ponded area. And the idea is to remove this and straighten out the hole, but this um, emergent um, area would be expanded. So I think, you know, on our plan, it shows as a ponded area. That's just how it shows on Mass Mapper. Um, but you can see that there's a nice vegetated bank and, you know, we're seeing a lot of um, vegetation that evolves throughout the season in different ways. So again, just trying to give you a bit more of a visual. I know John was able to come out with us um, earlier this summer to take a look at these areas, but I know for some of you looking at on a piece of paper is not always the same as seeing it in real life. So just wanted to share that with you to give you um, an idea of what the club is uh, the goal for the replication area. And again, the footprint of the footbridge and the adjacent wetland um, is about 1700 square feet and that includes the entirety of the footprint. Um, and the proposed replication area here is um, actually about 7,000 square feet. So it's a significantly larger replication area um, with plantings, with grading to remove the green and then grading that back and reestablishing the bank and planting that area out. So, oh, and I think I actually have pictures of the whole 110 that you just asked about too. Yeah. So this is the existing pond and you can see where um, this wood line really grew in. Um, this is the golf course on the full 10 on this side. Um, but just to give you a sense of what this area looks like too. This is towards the end where the work is proposed. Um, and nothing proposed in the wooded area at all, just on the golf course side of it. And I can stop there. All right. Um, uh, John, do you have any comments you want to? add to, to this um i think well i just received notice today that dp is going to be um making their rounds to do their final inspection for the previous permit that was a superseding order uh that's scheduled for i think mid-november so yes. they should be able to release that and give them a certificate of compliance if everything's in order uh, and no, no further comments about the current proposed work. Uh, anyone want to? Anyone on the commission want to make comments or questions? Um, Sarah, I think I had asked for a, uh, a detail on that crossing. Yes, if that was in the just, packet. Okay, if you, if you could just share that, please. Let me just pull that up. It's like four steps to screen sharing here. Okay, so this is the, we were able to, we did add the um, anticipated locations of the piles. Um, the scale on the plan is a little bit hard to see, so you really have to zoom in to see them, but the proposal is for, um, you know, typical of the other bridges that were built on the site, nine inch piles, um, set 10 feet apart. So, you know, we could extrapolate that that ends up being about 40 piles, but the detail um, is on the screen from the um, design build uh, bridge purveyor that the club has used um, throughout all of their construction. Um, typically, the way they build these is um, piles in place and then build the deck with 
the machinery on, from the decking. So there's no machinery in the wetland at all. It's just all done from the deck. I don't know, Kyle, if you wanted to add anything to that since you've been up there when these have been installed as well. No, I think that's exactly correct, Sarah. Um, they do a lot of work in much more marshy areas than we have with less stable ground. So that's that's how they do it. They use the a small small excavator to get themselves on the decking to build as they go. So the the deck advances from uh, pairs of piles forward. Yes. Then. Yes. Exactly. So you mentioned forty piles. I guess those are going to be driven to refusal, obviously. Um, so are you taking any provisions for sediment control um, during the in-water work? We're happy to, to talk about that, whatever the commission's preference is. Um, I think because they're not screw piles, there's not any um, spoils necessarily for, you know, versus driving them. But um, I think on our plans, we have sediment control barriers at the edges, but you know, if you have other thoughts, we're happy to discuss that or entertain it. Well, it's a I mean, flat area too. So I don't anticipate that there's going to be any um, major concern for runoff during construction. It's, it's a very, very flat area. I, I guess I'm more concerned about sedimentation in the water column, not runoff into, I mean, as you're working in the water. For the replication area? No, when you're driving 40 piles in the pond. It's a, in the wetland. It's a BVW. It's not a pond. It's a BVW. Okay. Yes. Uh, right. So if you're going to be dislodging any sediment there, um, what provisions would you take? There, there will be some migration of sediment as you're driving 40 piles. Now, is it going to is it going to end up in the wetland? Is it going to end up a, a layer of sediment on top of that the wetland vegetation? Well, we're, I mean, working in the wetland already, so I don't think it's really, I mean, there's no stream, there's no, you know, movement of water, there's no water being conveyed in this particular area. I'm not, not really sure what you mean. Okay, so, right, so you're going to be driving piles yeah. through the BVW, so you could have sediment that's dislodged, so how are you going to keep that from dispersing in the water column? I guess that's I mean, we can, we're happy to line that work area with you know, the approved materials. And I think that's per perfectly reasonable just to create a, an envelope of work um, during construction. I don't think that that's a lot to ask. I think the club would be happy to do that. Kyle? Yeah, I, yeah tip typically when you're doing work, especially inside of a BBW, you're gonna take provisions for sediment control. So unless there are any on the plans, we would like to see what, you, what you're gonna come up with. So, um, I don't really think it's up to us to condition it. I think you're going to have to come up with something that the contractor has to follow and to um, cost out as well. Lisa, so. let me just uh, ask more precisely what you mean. I mean, when you put a nine inch pile, are these are these piles pointed to make it easier for them to be driven? Is that uh, or are they they kind of flat bottom? Uh, I'll defer to you, Kyle, and what they've done here in the past. Typically, uh, typically they are narrower at the bottom if they are driving them. So, Chair, so when when you're driving these things, you don't expect uh, sediments to squirt up alongside the pile. Uh, I'm presuming. Typically, uh, no. My my envision of the process is you're driving the pile into the ground. The ground around it is expanding a bit, and the whole area around the pile may come up imperceptibly as a way of accommodating the volume of the pile. So I'm not sure how much sediment is actually going to be displaced by this process, assuming there's no machine on the in the wetland, which they're saying the process doesn't uh, isn't done that way. So, uh, I mean, I envision this as to be not a terribly disruptive process if it's carried out from the deck as the deck advances along the, the row of piles. 
that there's nothing really impacting the surface of the wetland. I mean, are you, do you have another thought, Lisa, or, or not? Uh, yeah, just the vibration alone will disperse sediment. So um, I would be looking for a sediment control plan for work within the wetland. I think, uh, Mr. Chair, that was a very good description of what has been done out here for other bridges. Um, we have not seen very much disturbance at all. Um, I, if, if it was a helical pile where it was being screwed in or, or you know, there was that type of um, action, yes, there would be more spoils that would be coming out of the ground. So I think in that case, that would be a different discussion, but I think your description of it was very much in keeping with past projects out here. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Yeah, to your point, Sarah, for what it's worth, I've been at the club for 20 plus years. I don't think we've had to provide a sediment control plan for any of the previous 25 or six bridges, so it would be new. All right, so that is uh, Dan uh, Wasilewski speaking. That's correct. Yeah, just for the record. All right, um, questions from anyone else? And we can, I think at this point, open it up to any um, participants in the meeting who have questions or comments. Uh, you just need to identify yourself. So um, since I, there are no further questions, I'm going to raise the question of uh, whether we can consider closure of this uh, hearing tonight. John, what do you think? So the question is, does the commission feel comfortable closing a project without having a superseding order closed on the project? I guess that's my first question. And then the other question is, we can't close it We'd have to close an issue and order conditions tonight because we'd be beyond the the um, 21 day window. So I have a draft which I haven't uploaded on the um, on this the Google Drive. I was busy today, so I couldn't get it up get it up on the Google Drive. But I have some uh, information into a draft which has information on getting basically the construction for the boardwalk because I think that's going to be needed when they go to construction for it um, to get a better understanding with their sequencing and understanding of how that's going to be constructed because whether they're coming from one side or the other um, you know they're going to not they're not going to start on one side and then go to the other side they're going to want to start on one side and keep going that way until they get to the other side um, to make it a lot easier with the transition so um, I'd just like to see some sort of se construction sequencing with that. But um, besides that, obviously, it would be the standard policy for um, wetland mitigation and making sure that that is uh, conducive with the acts criteria for the two year monitoring. Um, but besides that, it would just get a better understanding of what the dimensions of the bridge are and getting a better understanding how many piles because whatever we're permitting, that's going to basically be what they're required because I just want to make sure 40 is enough because if it's not, then we don't want to, we don't want to limit them to that number 40. So, um, you know, that's why I recommended to them to have a physical plan showing the 40 piles to see if it was enough to match the distance with the, you know, with the, I guess the diagram that they have kind of outlined just to make sure that it would work. Um, because, you know, the amendment process can take a little bit too. So Joe, you're saying that they still us Oh, us some information, including sequencing. Well, so. I, I think that's something that we could potentially put into the order of conditions uh, prior to construction. They could provide us those plans um, prior to uh, like a pre-construction meeting or something like that. They can come in front of the commission and present those plans because I think this can all, all of this work can be undertaken knowing that, for instance, they're going to do this. They have done this before. They did this a few years ago, so it seems like they can do it. It's more so the question with um, <clears throat> the we're issuing order conditions when there's already another outstanding order conditions that's not from from us. So that's kind of where I just want to make sure that you know the commission, if they do do issue this an order of conditions for this, they know that they issued it on top of another order of conditions that hasn't been closed out. That's not under our purview. It's under the state's purview. Well, if DEP is doing their inspection mid November, when would we expect them to issue? uh coc it could be god knows when right it, it could be a while um and i would just 
like to point out that the project is complete and the replication area that was required by DEP is complete after two growing seasons. So if it makes the commission feel better, even though that is an open superseding order issued by DEP, it is um, a, a complete project and has undergone the growing season review. We're at the very tail end. And I would say, you know, to Commissioner Carrozza's point, it could be several months before that um, COC actually goes through the process at DEP um, and gets issued. So um, if the commission is comfortable with it, we would ask for relief on that if that's something that you typically don't do. Um, and as to the bridge comment, um, John, I lost you on the screen, but uh, oh, there you are. <laughs> um, we, and I can put my screen back up, just I had mentioned that the bridge um piles were a little bit hard to see at this scale but if i zoom way in you can see that we added them with the dimensions noted there are actually we had said plus or minus 40 in our letter there are actually 42 on the plan um but just so the commission just a reminder that the footprint of the impact is not from the number of piles it's for the bridge footprint in its entirety so the bridge the boardwalk um, is the impact takeoff that we had provided. So even if it's the number of piles are slightly different from the plan, um, that the footprint of the entirety of the bridge is what we're using the takeoff number for. Um, and as so you're, you're being conservative then? Yes, okay. we're being very conservative. We didn't want to just itemize each of the poles so that we were limited to a small footprint and just wanted to be transparent with the commission about the size of the work. Um, the club uses a design builder for their bridges, so we're more than happy to provide the final um, construction drawings to the commission through John um, when they have them in hand and certainly open to a pre-construction meeting or discussion about the bridge details even prior to pre-construction if that's the preference. Um, certainly happy to go through all of that. And as you said, the club has done this several times before, so they're well practiced in it and they've got it down to a science. So um, happy to share whatever we can um, going forward. And and just a comment about closure versus continuing. I didn't realize um, that our next meeting is the 25th of November and that is well beyond the 21 day uh, period where we have to act. So we will request that you agree to a continuation until that time, simply to stay within the administrative constraints of, of the law. Uh, understood. I'm just not sure we're going to have a certificate of compliance any time in this. We may not even get it till 2025. Sometimes DEP is no, a very long time I, to issue I it. I understand that, but okay. one of the things that you may be able to comment on is the discussions that occurred during the inspection. Um, mm -hmm. And that may be helpful. I, I mean, I, I think I, I would agree that expecting the EP to be timely is uh, overly optimistic. <laughs> so do you expect to undertake this work uh, next spring? Or this year. I'll, leave, I'll leave that to Kyle or Dan to comment on. I'm not sure what their schedule is. Um, sorry, uh, we don't have a definite time frame for this work. Um, we wanted to get ahead with the permitting process and then go from there. But we have okay. a lot of things to align to get this started. Okay. So the continuation, you know, won't matter, shouldn't matter one way or the other, and then we'll have a better idea of um, DEP's thought process um, if they're all set when they leave that site visit, hopefully. Um, that'll give us some level of comfort. All right, uh, before we continue, before we consider a continuation motion, any further questions or comments on uh, this project from anyone participating in the, the meeting? And if not, then we can consider a motion to continue until November 25th. So move. Oh, there you go. Second. Okay. You guys yeah. are good at getting within milliseconds of each other. <laughs> Just oh. for, uh, so is that the week of Thanksgiving 
Uh, Thanksgiving is on the 28th. Thanksgiving is 28th. Are you, okay. Are, are you confident you'll have that meeting or have a quorum at that meeting? Everyone's planning to come. Okay. Uh, we think so. I'll be there. It's, it's our only meeting uh, in November. Uh, uh, I certainly will be here, and I don't know if anyone else is planning to. They're out of town for that week. Uh, I'll be here. Um, all right, so we have a motion on the table by uh, Dan, seconded by Lisa for continuation of this hearing until November the 25th. So roll call vote, starting with Mark and Paxton. Aye. Aye. Lisa and uh, Dan. Aye. Aye. And uh, did we lose Tama? Yes, she's no longer on the call. Okay, uh, I'll throw in an, an aye. Uh, so the motion carries and uh, I don't know, we can kind of uh, do a, uh, uh, let's see how it goes to see if any representative is needed at that time. We may just have a situation where if you provide that, that requested information, we will just review it, close and issue. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to send an email to the commission through John after we have our site walk with DEP, if that's helpful. Um, okay. And then we can catch up in November. All right, well, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is a new public hearing, uh, file number 250-1149, uh, 183 Taunton Avenue. Oh, no, no, I think I, where, where are we here? No, I think that's right, Julian. I just had a quick, Oh, it's an amended order of conditions. All right, that's what that's what threw me. Yes. Not an order of conditions, amended order of conditions. Uh, all right. A quick question for Megan. Um, the continuance from 257 to 259 Mansfield Ave, the, ah, it says two different file numbers here. We just need to make sure which one's which. We continued it at the beginning for 1161, and then the entry on the, um, uh, no, the below says 1166. 1166. Yeah, they're two, two separate projects. Oh. Well, yeah. yeah. That, that oh, was just, uh, that was a okay. that, Never mind. That, uh, yeah, that, that, that's a project that's in Oops. the in the orbit that is not on the agenda through discussion now, but it, it was previously uh, <clears throat> continued until 1125. Uh, and then we also... Okay. Can you okay. uh, the 1166 to uh, okay. 1125? And now we're at file number 1149, and I'm going to wager um, that uh, Greg was here. Was he the? Oh, there he is. Greg. So uh, you're the representative for this applicant? That's correct. Uh, share screen. <clears throat> um, so this is 1183. Thornton Avenue have been before you several times. The last one was <clears throat> back in February of this year. Uh, we came before you for the, basically the same project, but uh, we had a detached garage <clears throat> with a new septic system. So the detached garage was set forward and then the septic was behind that in this area. I assume you can see my screen. Yep. <clears throat> so the client has decided to attach the garage to the house, and then we move the septic system to the front. <clears throat> um, the garage is slightly smaller than the previous. Uh, it's about 112 square feet smaller because when it's attached, we have to meet the 25 foot setback. So again, the um, resource series here is the mean, mean annual high water mark of the Wading River is our property line. We have the 100 and 200 foot uh, riparian zones. We also have BBW that's adjacent to the river and then isolated, isolated land subject to flooding in this area as well as floodplain that runs through the property along this side of the house. <clears throat> so the house was built uh, 
prior to 1996, so the house and driveway and some of the walkways were pre-existing and exempt. And then we did the pool in the back, which is exempt from the Rivers Act. So we had the original septic system disturbance. Now we have a proposed garage and new septic system. Uh, because we're attached now, we're, our garage was half out of the riparian zone, but because we're attached to the house, no work is within the first 100 feet, but the entire garage is within the 200. Small amount of uh, pavement extended, a widened to meet the garage. And we place the sector system here. That's the longest we can make this run by gravity without adding a uh, pump chamber to the system. So a portion of the septic will be within the 200 foot riparian, but again, nothing's within the 100 foot of the wetlands. <clears throat> so we have a slightly more uh, um, disturbance uh, than the last time we were at um, like four, around 4% in the past, uh, back in February. Uh, now we're at 5.5% in the total disturbance within the uh, riverfront area. So we're asking uh, for reapproval of the modified uh, design. All right. Any uh, questions from anyone on the commission? And uh, John, I don't know if you want to weigh in on any comments. Um, just a question, Craig. Did you have any issues with any other boards getting approvals and seeking approvals for the other design? <clears throat> the other design? Yeah, the previous design. Uh, previous design, we got approved by the Board of Health. This okay. time, I think they're waiting for you. He hasn't, I haven't seen a comment from um, uh, Christian Zahn or the Board of Health agent since we filed. Okay. But everything is, is good with the building and the zoning and everything else? Yeah, we meet the zoning requirements. We're less than, we allowed 16% coverage uh, by building. We're at 5.6. Uh, we meet the required setbacks for uh, uh, the zoning. So we don't have any issues there. I don't anticipate the septic system not being approved. It's a basic, uh, basically the same system we had. We just moved it forward. Okay. Uh, we are also, I should say, we are, we are still, uh, the roof water is still going to a Caltech recharge area up here. So, John, I guess the question is whether we need to add any uh, new conditions to the order or it's, you know. I, I think just uh, uh, honestly for this one, I think it's just updating the numbers. Um, okay. And just the plan. Supplanting mm -hmm. the plan with this one and just updating the numbers. I think it's a pretty cut and dry kind of switch. Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. they're below the threshold, so it's yeah. up to the commission to make that determination. Um, but to me, I think this is, if I was the, the homeowner, this is this is kind of what I would want. So, um, but that's just my opinion. Yeah, we, he wants to put a RV in, so that's why we had a slightly bigger garage when we moved it forward. But when we move it back, we have to conform to the uh, setback of the house. So it narrows it down to 24 feet, which is still large enough for an RV. Understood. <clears throat> All right. Uh, any further questions or comments from anyone in the meeting? Um, so again, we have the Rinko, um, well, actually, we're not going to issue a new order. We're just going to issue uh, a vote to accept or uh, no we have to issue a new order because it has new findings in it so it will be a new order yeah all right so and that i would say that if the commission is amenable to it i have already have a draft of this one all i all i was going to do is just update the table that's in there along mm -hmm. with just adding the new plan the fresh plan that craig has here dated october 24th 2024 okay if they're amenable to that so, so we can oh, close right. and then based on just your updates on the findings, we're good. Okay. Okay. So we can, continue, we can uh, consider a motion to close unless there are further questions, comments. Unless there are any comments from the audience. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, I opened it up to the whole meeting and uh, we can emphasize that that anyone can ask a question about this project if they wish to at this point. Otherwise, we are going to proceed to a motion to close. And seeing, make a motion. Oh. Yes, go ahead. Your motion. I would make a motion to close for file 250-1149. Second. So we have a motion by Lisa, second by Paxton to close the, the hearing for file 250-1149. Uh, roll call vote beginning with uh, Mark and Lisa. Aye. Aye. And Dan and Paxton. Aye. Aye. And I'll throw in an ayes. The motion carries. So that completes our new public hearing hearings. Um, and uh, thank you, Craig. So we can pop back up to uh, review uh, draft minutes. Mm -hmm. to, um, which is uh, Monday, October 7th. Uh, I didn't see anything. Anybody have any questions or comments about that? Otherwise, we can consider a motion to uh, approve the draft that's submitted. Oh, there is, there is a wrinkle. Um, Uh, let's see. Vest and Carosa were absent. So, I mean, this is the question of whether this statement carries unanimously. Uh, I guess carries unanimously with regard to the quorum present. Is that how that, that what that means? That's how I was taking it, but I can just change it. No, I, I mean, it doesn't, I, I mean, but when, when Joe, for example, abstains, uh, although it's specified, so I don't know if it even matters. Uh, I, I would perhaps just change it to carries. Okay, uh, I can do that. Or, or motion carries, um, so that we don't have any ambiguity because we're, we're putting the details in. Okay. I mean, I don't know if we have to change this draft at all because, uh, but I think in terms of the format in the future, maybe it would be easier just motion carries and then you have the details of the vote. Okay, that makes sense. Any other comments on this? Uh, If not, we can consider a motion to approve or reject or whatever. I'll make the motion to approve the minutes from 10 7. Second. We have a motion by Paxton, seconded by Mark. Roll call vote starting with Mark and Paxton. Aye. Aye. And uh, Dan and Lisa. Aye. Abstain. And I'll throw in an aye. So the motion carries. And next item is enforcement orders and violation notices. There's a discussion about the YMCA. Yeah, it doesn't look like anyone from the YMCA or Clear Channel or the surveyors here tonight. So I'll leave it at that. I sent right. out a violation notice and told them to Is come to the Ms. meeting. Is not from there? No, she's with us. She has the COC for oh, 195 okay. Mansfield. Um, so, all right. Did, didn't you meet them out there? I did, and they, they waited like three months, and I was, you know, saying, can you please provide me updates? Can you please provide me updates? 
um, you know, I've been kind of lenient, but at the same point at this point, you know, this all occurred in July. It's currently, we're approaching November and I'm being told that we're working on it. We're working on it. So, you know, I like to see results when it comes to violations and enforcement. And unfortunately, you know, I don't know how much of a leash to give people, um, you know, when I try to be <clears throat> cordial and respectful of, uh, you know, meeting with them. So, you know, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get much traction unless there's a little bit more initiative from the commission on this one. Well, um, the fact that they didn't even show up. I mean, they knew they were on tonight, right? Today's the 28th and a uh, violation notice that I sent, o sent over to everybody at the the commission I sent over to them and everybody from over there received it. So, yeah, I mean, the fact that they not one person could show up just to give us a status update is not very polite. So I think we're done with the olive branches. So if the commission would like me to um, write up a formal enforcement order uh, on their behalf, I am more than happy to do so. I think <clears throat> also the enforcement order will need to include some sort of language that says their perpetual conditions with the past permit have now expired or they're now released um, to really give them more incentive to make sure next time that they listen to us. Um, I just, I think, you know, if I went all through all the trouble to hire a surveyor and go through the, the permitting process, spend thousands of dollars um to have to do that again i mean it's not my money but if it was i definitely want to show up to a meeting so so this is um involving the sign or what what um... so this is involving the sign and what they did was they someone from i don't know who if it was the ymca or clear channel because you know i'm not i wasn't there i wasn't present so i can't really tell you who did it but vegetation was cut without notify notification to our office, which is one of the conditions in the order, um, and letting us know that they were going to cut it because there's information there that says need to be cut to a certain height within a certain area. And that area was not walked. It was not um, field inspected prior to them mm -hmm. doing of those activities. So those were the perpetual conditions when it comes to vegetative ma maintenance within the billboard maintenance area. So that was one of the perpetual restrictions for the issuance of that past permit, which is now expired. Well, and they also had a violation in the past because we had an issue with them taking down the paper and the physical billboard paper and just throwing it into the wetland, leaving it in the wetland. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty much done with them because they're just not listening, obviously. Obviously, the Y is not communicating as the leaser, the person leasing this property, to um, Clear Channel, they're not um, articulating what the conditions are. So I think we need them both in the room. We need a representative from Clear Channel and the Y. And I would make a motion that we would send the, um, is this the second enforcement order? Do we already have an enforcement order, John? I think you guys have released that one. You sent a letter, or Jennifer did, um, for the past occurrence. Because oh, they no, can't. I mean, you need a motion for for. Um, I thought you already sent an e an enforcement order. I sent a violation notice. Oh, a violation notice. Okay. I need so I you... need a motion from the board to send an enforcement order. Okay. On your behalf. Okay, I will make that motion. To send an enforcement order for um, the YMCA. Property. Second. Second. Uh, so we have a motion by Lisa, seconded by Dan uh, and Mark and Paxton. How do you vote? Aye. Aye. And uh, Dan and Lisa? Aye. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye as well, so the motion carries. Um, all right, so that's the uh, violation notice, and then we have zero, zero rear village way uh property donation yes so we were contacted by a recent uh landowner well their representative and can everyone see my screen yes 
um, there is a piece of property that they're looking to donate to the Conservation Commission. This um, property has the address <clears throat> of Zero Village Way. It is um, kind of just to zoom out, a old colony road here, and it's Village Ways over here, North Worcester Streets here. So it's basically on the western side of town. And it's about 16 acres of land that they're looking to donate uh, to the Conservation Commission. We currently have uh, to the south the pre court property with the 25 acre uh, conservation restriction, which is right here. And then we also have uh, various parcels along the western uh, property line over here uh, that are owned by the town of Norton as well. So it would be a contiguous kind of donation that would allow us to have. Uh, a contiguous connection of land. And to me, I think I looked, did some back history on it. I went actually out here to take a look at the site. It's mainly all wetlands and a stream. So uh, I think that it would just be a, a very nice piece of land to have for keeping that con contiguous uh, kind of wetland and, and um, stream uh, preservation and protection for this section over here. So all I would need um, from the commission is just a vote in favor um, for them to accept and have me work with their attorney um, to kind of work with the paperwork to actually come in and, and work with the deed uh, to kind of get that transition to then present to the commission for acceptance at, at hopefully the next meeting. Is that up against the town line? It is. Yeah. Well, that doesn't seem too controversial. So. Uh... It sounds like um, we could offer such a motion. So moved if we need a motion. We do. Second. So we have a motion by Dan, uh, seconded by Paxton. And if I can paraphrase the motion, it is to empower uh, John Thomas to. Um, go through whatever procedures are necessary to uh, recommend. I'm assuming it has to be accepted by the select board. Uh, so recommend that uh, the select board accept this land donation. Sounds good to me. All right. So roll call vote starting with Mark and Paxel. Paxton. Aye. Aye. Uh, and Joe is now on. If you heard that and want to vote on that, you certainly may. Hi. Uh, I'm having some computer troubles here. I haven't been able to get logged in. My computer uh, starting, so I apologize. Oh, I understand. It happens. Dan and Lisa, how do you vote? Aye. 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 And I'll throw in an aye. So that motion carries. Um, so I don't know if there are any public questions or public inquiries. Uh, now is the time to ask that question. And if not, we are now, um, in our certificate of compliance section and we have, looks like we have two COCs and an extension. So 195 Mansfield Avenue. File number 250-1059. Any uh, questions about, I mean, any uh, description of what that entailed? Um, so um, I'm sure everybody knows the um, large apartment building complex that's over by McDonald's. They're yeah. coming in for a COC for the work that was proposed within conservation jurisdiction. Majority of the work was surrounding the um, infiltration basin and some other vegetative um, dressing. Um, I was out there uh, and everything looked per plan. The, the area that's outside our jurisdiction, they still have some final touches to do by, and I think they're wrapping up by mid November to get all that addressed. But, um, you know, there are some other items that are outside conservation jurisdiction that need to be. Uh, monitored for stormwater purposes, but that's something that can be had with the uh, stormwater permit that we have on file with the planning board. So 
Uh, with that said, everything that has to do with conservation and the COC, I think it's appropriate to issue the COC for this for this project. And this would be a full COC. That's correct. <laughs> So right. I'll make a motion to issue. Yeah, go ahead. COC. I'll make a motion to issue a full COC for 250-1059. Uh, Second. Uh, well, we're going to throw that one to Dan. So motion by Lisa, seconded by Dan. Uh, we'll call Mark and uh, Paxton. How do you vote? Aye. Aye. And uh, Dan and uh, Lisa? Aye. Aye. And I'll throw in an eye. It looks like, uh, Joe, I don't know if you want to do an eye on that uh, COC, but. Uh, aye. Um, all right, most curious. So a COC is issued for a final number uh, 250 1059. Next item is 250 1121 concerning 72 East Main Street. Um, so everything is stabilized with regard to conservation. Yeah, I've never seen hydro seed grow this fast. I don't know what they put in it, but it it was uh, established real quickly um, from like two months global, ago. So, well, climate change and global warming. So, John, I noticed I was there last weekend, I think. Um, the lot directly in front of Town Hall is still ripped up. What's going on there? And is that... Yeah, so, <laughs> so here's here's the catch, catch 22 situation that we have. So mm -hmm. that section of the project is obviously it's outside conservation jurisdiction. That parking lot is for visitor parking that still needs to be done. Unfortunately, the part here is that a good portion of the building that was part of the old town hall needs to be torn down so that the way they can start working on the parking lot. So the challenge is now is that the contractors are ready to tear the building down, but the building is not ready to be torn down because we still have stuff in the building. So. That's kind of where we're at right now. So, so the front portion and existing town hall is outside of jurisdiction then. The section that is, I guess, where that parking lot is, that the one that is basically the lot between where the old town hall is and where the police department is, that lot specifically is outside conservation jurisdiction. Oh, I, I was talking about the one directly. So if you're standing at the new town hall looking out onto the street is a is a whole lot that's ripped up right there. It had a fence around it. Is is that out of jurisdiction too? Yeah, that one's out of that's out of riverfront too. Okay. Okay. And so okay, everything looks good then. Everything within conservation jurisdiction looks good. Mm -hmm. It's just that they need to make sure to have the rest of that taken care of. Well all you have to do is look out the window and make sure they're not <laughs> I'm right there, you know. So I will make a motion to issue a full COC for 250-1121. Motion by Lisa, seconded by? Second. Paxton? Uh, so uh, Mark and Joe, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Paxton and Dan? Aye. Aye. And Lisa? Aye. And I'll throw in an eye on the motion carries. Um, and then a request for a three year extension. Uh, what's the update on 131 John Scott Boulevard? So they are still <clears throat> awaiting funding uh, to construct their pool that they were permitted to have. So I, they're looking for a three year extension to finish the construction of the pool. So non-controversial, they just can't can't get the funding quite yet. So can't afford it. But you know, you know, permits they're only good for seven years. So that's what I told them. So well, who needs a pool, quite frankly? But that's another discussion. Uh, so I'll make a motion to uh, issue 
three-year extension for file 250-1085. Motion by Second. Lisa. Seconded by Joe. Uh, so Joe and Mark, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. So Paxton, Dan, and Lisa, how do you vote? Aye. 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 And I'll throw in an aye. The motion carries. Uh, and then we have um, the amended order of condition for file number 250-1149-183 Taunton Avenue. And I see the only change is you scratched out the um, prior file. Um, I might have some comments okay uh in fact i do have some comments uh under the findings uh, uh finding c or one c i'm sorry on that very first page yeah uh my copy at least it said uh land under water bodies blah 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 uh identified as a resource area comma subject t it doesn't say two it doesn't say subject two it says subject t i will make that administrative change dan good catch okay, okay. uh it's just a stylistic thing uh, number four uh the second line of, of number four uh, the proposed work is for the construction of a proposed detached garage. You might just say that uh, the um, uh, it's going to be attached. Yeah, now, Dan. I'm sorry. It's going to be attached now. It's just going to change. Yes, yeah, so, so now he has to change that to attached. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> or, or just delete. Or just delete detached. Uh, since yeah. The plan is referenced as some. You might. Yeah, the applicant proposes to attach a garage or something like that. Um, yeah, and then the third one, I won't even bother mentioning. Well, you have impeccable attention to detail, Dan. Has anyone ever told you that? Uh, yeah, you know, it's um, ruined many uh, relationships, uh, friendships, you know, that, and generally that's the last thing they say. You <laughs> have well, Dan, I find, I find it very helpful because you get the, the minor things that I might overlook. So I appreciate it. <laughs> sure. No problem. Well, if you really do want that other thing, then that, uh, if you go down to 14, yeah, the bottom gonna... line of 14, it's not going to ruin uh, your relationship here. Okay, well, that's good. Uh, the bottom line of uh, 14, um, it says this low line at any time. Uh, those are the last words. All you need to say is, uh, the, you've already said what the LOW is. So you can just say, you know, the LOW at any time. All right, Megan, did you get all that? Thing. So I'm sorry. I asked Megan if she got all that because she's making yeah, all the changes. Delete, to delete the word. Uh, not everything. Um, you could you could just say it's right now. It says this low line, and you can just change it to below, because you've already you've yeah. gone to the trouble to define the low, the limit of work, and. So you don't have to, um, in other words, the limit the line is the line. is redundant. Line is redundant, Dan, right? Just yes, just put, that is yeah, correct, okay. yes. All right. All right. Scratch the word line. That's all. Right. All set. All right. So we have uh, some edits. Any further comments about the... Uh, the amended order of conditions for file 250-1149. Uh, what's um, the, what's... Sorry, go ahead. Does it have to say amended at the top? 
What's that? The, 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 shouldn't this say amended order? It's top? going to say, well, I'm going to put amended at the section where it is amended. Um, so the changes, I'm going to probably put amended as I would okay. typically with other things. Um, okay. But I will put amended order conditions on it. <clears throat> Okay. Which will then also go with the um, issued actually order itself, which is going to say amended order conditions. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Sorry, Dan. No, that's all right. Um, and is Tacifier is that a is that a brand or is it a kind? I thought it was a kind it's of. Like glue. It's just a. It's, it's like glue. It's something that's sprayed. It's like a sprayed glue. Okay. Adhesive, well, a bonding agent, but it's a bonding agent. I think that's a good term right there. Yes. It's a, it's um, not proprietary. So if it's not proprietary, you can, you don't have to capitalize it. Um, somewhere it says tachifiers with a capital T. Um, I'll make sure to change that for the rest of the ones that I use for templates. Yeah, I see it on F fifteen F, but it's it's not capitalized. So. Okay. Well, I think somewhere it was. I could be wrong. I, I'm sure with your attention to detail, you're probably right, Dan. Um. <clears throat> you do a search or something. I don't know. Anyway, okay, I can I will make a motion to um, issue the amended order of conditions for uh, file two fifty dash one one four nine as discussed. And I will second that. All right, motion by Lisa, seconded by Dan. Uh, roll call vote starting with Mark, Joe, and Paxton. Aye. 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 I don't know if Joe has to abstain from that one. Um, oh, because he wasn't on. Well, but, but the, really the, the motion is just to approve these changes. So I, I don't he know. He wasn't present at the, at the time that they were giving the presentation. So he's going to have to abstain from it. The motion. Okay, we can throw yeah. in an abstention there, and we have a motion. We, I mean, we have a quorum, so it's okay. Yeah. So we still have uh, Dan and Lisa to vote. Aye. Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. So the motion approving the amended order carries. And I think that carries us to the end of our agenda, unless I overlook something. No, but I do have a a, a comment, an issue that's come up on the rail trail. Okay. Uh, John Thomas, I'm hoping you can help out. So I go on the real trail quite a bit on North Washington Street, and the Land Preservation Society has a, um, a little kiosk there with a, um, um, a map and a trash barrel. Now, the trash barrel is just for use um, for people on the trail, on the other to the wooded trail, okay? where you Are you talking trail. about Johnson? Yes. Okay. So... Um, Oh, and so I was there this weekend and I ran into somebody from Land Preservation Society who was saying that people are now, I mean, the thing is overflowing with dog crap bags. And that's not what that trash barrel is for. There are car mats. People are using it as a dumping ground now. And so you get more users there. So they're using that trash barrel that the LPS put out. And the poor guy has to clean this thing up every week. Now, right. I believe that I asked Matt Shute from beta i remember public, you asking during that public hearing if they if uh they were going to provide trash barrels and i think the answer was no if i recall um i think they were actually were going to put some down oh they okay but, that's but they were going to be at the locations where highway would have easy access to those to to take care of the issue um okay. but along the trails i think they were um they were not going to put any because it would just be a difficulty for them to get in and out uh, along that main or main system. Can you? Um, I don't have the plans, John. Um, would you mind looking up where they're going to put the trash um, barrels or the, yeah. the trash for the rail trail itself, and then at least I can 
uh, maybe talk to this person of the Land Preservation Society to, um, you know, tell them that, that there are going to be trash receptacles so coming I, for I'm training. meeting with Dan Murray, the president, tomorrow. So okay. I will talk to him and let him know of the intent. Um, okay. And I'll also tell him, you know, to alleviate some of the issues, he may want to put up a sign or something. Um, in the yeah. Interim. So, yeah, or, I mean, or, or potentially remove the barrel until the new ones get put in. I think that's yeah. what I'm going to probably tell them to do. Um, that way people, what they, what their dog does out there, they can take with them on the way out. So, yes. Yep. In, in the meantime, people have just been putting up um, a trash bag on the end of the wooden guardrail where people park, um, just so people can put their stuff away. But yeah, if they put up a sign, it would be really nice to say that that's for use for the trail trail, the wooded trail, not a rail trail. Um, but anyway, yeah, that would be fantastic if you could talk to them. I will. Okay. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Anything else? Dan, uh, any, wise, any wise words today? On uh, I, uh, what would you like me to hold? Oh, I have lots of wise, <laughs> wise words, but you don't want to hear them. Uh, because they're political and, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. uh, well, yeah. I meant, I meant wise <laughs> exiting point. words for, for saying goodbye. That's what I'm saying. Uh, oh, yes. Um, oh, let's see. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to throw in, I'm going to throw in that when we meet again, this goddamn election will be over. <laughs> Sounds good to me. That's right. I voted early and I voted for Kamala. Good. All right. Might be okay. it might still be counting. So, uh. <laughs> okay. Well, well, it should be pretty obvious who the environmental candidate is. <laughs> All right. Motion. Motion to adjourn. I think motion so. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Yep. All right. Here we go. All in favor. Sounds good. Aye. Take right. care, everyone. Happy Thank Halloween. Thank you. Thank you.